happy Friday gamers. If this video comes out on Friday on time, then it will be something of a minor miracle. So, got a package in the mail, technically yesterday, no, but I was at work, so I, I couldn't sign for it, which is always annoying. Uh, but this time, it's something a little bit different. It's not AmiAmi, Ami. this is uh, a proxy order. I think I've done one of these before. Uh, actually, let me make sure I don't have anything in here that could be linked to me. Okay, I don't think so. So... If I do, I'll just blur it out after the fact. So this is an order I didn't really want to place, uh, but I ended up placing it anyways. It's a bunch of random bullshit. Um, so let's just get into it. The first thing... Oh, actually, I should explain. This was from Zen Market. Zen Market, I'm pretty sure their prices have started to go up. Uh, they're still not exactly the best in terms of uh, UI. I think Bai is technically better, but I'm too much of a hipster to use Bai, so I continue to use uh, Zen Market. Um, but based on the fees this time, it was a little bit more than I thought, especially considering the the general weight and how much I was ordering. And then plus, actually seeing how big this package is, they charged me about six thousand six hundred yen to ship it via EMS. And EMS is literally a meme shipping line. I should have used DHL. Uh, but regardless, uh, that that's the issue with, or that's the whole situation with that. Uh, but anyways, let's get into it. The first thing here uh, is interesting. This is a Comicat uh, wristband. I purchased this as a sort of fallback. Uh, for those who don't know, I did attend uh, Fuyu Komi this year, uh, which a video will be coming out on that shortly. I just haven't gotten around to record slash edit slash motivate myself to do something like that. So I have a couple pictures and a lot of stories to tell, uh, but here is the wristband for uh, day two, which is the day I attended. I purchased this from uh, Tora no Ana, since they still technically operate a... Actually, was it Tora no Ana or was it Melon? I think it was Melon Books, I want to say. But you can get it from a number of different stores like Animate, Tora no Ana, uh, Gamers even, I think, uh, and Melon Books. Um, but they sell these wristbands, uh, they also sell the catalog as well, which I believe has a wristband in it uh, that you, you, can, you can use to enter the convention. Uh, but one way you can get in if you don't win the, uh, the early lottery uh, is you can purchase a wristband, which typically you can only purchase within Japan, and you can proxy it over to the United States. And it should be fairly cheap since if you just ship just a wristband in like a sort of like a reinforced envelope it should be pretty quick um but here's just a regular wristband which i guess i'm going to keep as a souvenir purpose now uh, but this is uh gozen sanka so this would be am technically let me get my wristband to show you so for reference this is the early entrance uh, wristband for comic uh you can see right there it says uh adi if this camera will end up focusing at all I don't even know where the lens is. It focused briefly. There we go. So this is the early entrance wristband. It says right here. Uh, and this would be, this was technically the AM, but uh, early entered at 1030. And then this would have been, I think it was 1030. And this would have been 11. So you would have had a, a 30 minute head start regardless. Um but you know whatever this was 550 yen i believe uh to enter to get the lottery for the early admission and the regular one i believe was like 1500 yen so it's it's whatever um i ended up getting both i only entered it through the early i overspent a lot but uh, at the time i purchased this as a backup because i didn't know if i was going to win the lottery for the early admission uh wristband so i was like i don't want to be left without a ticket and i the last thing i want to do is to be in the uh, afternoon entrance or something like that and then by then it's going to already be busy and stuff will sell out uh and i didn't really know what to expect so i wanted to get in as early as possible and spend as much of my day in uh tokyo big site as possible so moving on i got some more stuff in here i will say that the packaging is pretty decent this time um 
I, I usually have pretty good uh good luck with Zen Market. So here's the bulk of the, the order, I suppose. On top, we have uh, something that continues on from the lecture I did. This was the Idol Master Master Movie DVD that I purchased. Um, this one looks to be in pretty decent condition. I'm going to open it up in a second to take a look at it. Uh, during my lecture, I have uh, a, a correction to make about the DVD. I think I, I put an annotation in it, but I mentioned that I wasn't able to find the DVD in good quality, and that still sort of remains... That's that's not exactly true. So I ended up finding first uh, like a low quality version on YouTube that's up there, but it's not titled the Idol Master Master Movie. It's like Idol Master like something else. Now I'll put a link in the description. I think there was a link in the the lecture video, but if you want, I could send you that. But um, I ended up finding a better version of the video uh, on Billy Billy. And it's this exact performance. Uh, however, it's I still have yet to find a, a well-seated version of the DVD because there is technically a version out there that exists, but I had been downloading it for literal weeks at this point. I think it's been almost a month or more that I've been just sitting on the torrent, and it, you know, it's it's barely moving. And I think this past while it stalled. There was maybe one person seeing it, so I'm gonna do a proper. Uh, a DVD rip of this and uh, post it on Meow or something since it's kind of unusual that there wasn't any uploads of it considering it's uh, the first major concert that the Idolmaster did the first anniversary and of course the disc falls out fucking immediately uh, it's in all right condition you can't really tell right here but um, no scratches or anything while I'm at it, I might as well show you. Okay, seems like something was damaged in transport. It was already damaged. Got the say you stuff in the background. But this little plastic thing that typically holds the case in popped out. So that's rather unfortunate. Maybe, I'm not sure if that's damaged in transport uh, or what, but yeah, I guess it is what it is. And then there's a little booklet that's showing you the different say you and the the respective characters that they voice and then i'm assuming these are gonna be yeah these are lyrics to the songs in here that i'm assuming were part of the set list and then uh, i think this is the chapters for the the performance oh yeah here we go there's the set list and it tells you does it tell you who was in it? Yeah. Here's a set list. That's pretty neat. This one was pretty cheap. Relatively. And, last but not least, the main reason why I got this uh, order in the first place. Uh, which... This is a manga called Sotaku no Akihabara Funtoki. I got all six volumes for a steal, uh, I for like 110 yen for everything, uh, which is, I, I don't think it's even a dollar. So the, my reasoning for purchasing this manga right here uh, is, uh, I wrote a blog recently, after stumbling across some mysterious otaku manga at a convention, uh, I found a manga called I Otaku uh, by, what's his name, uh, Jiro Suzuki? And, it, like, I saw that manga, and I initially thought it was one of those, like, Tokyo Pop original English manga titles or whatever. Uh, it ended up not being true. It was, like, a legit uh, Japanese manga about an otaku in Akihabara, and it's pretty based. Uh, or at least what I've read of it was pretty based. And then I went on to read another manga uh, called Maniac Road, and then I wrote a blog sort of comparing and contrasting them since it came out. Around a similar era, they were both kind of mysterious uh, manga about otaku that didn't seem to have much uh, publicity going around uh, with them, or at least didn't have as cult following as like Genshi Ken or NHK or something like that. 
Um, and I found out that Akihabara, uh, uh, or Sotoku no Akihabara Funtoki had six volumes as opposed to only two that were localized in English. And uh, it, apparently, at least based off what I can see, volumes three and four were possibly going to be localized into English by Seven Seas. Uh, I mean, based on what I saw on Anime News Network, that there was, uh, and on the Wayback Machine as well, that there were listings on their website on Go Manga. I think it was Go Manga. Uh, like the Go Manga domain, there was listings uh, saying that the volume three is coming soon or something like that. As well as like a, like a little thumbnail image of volume three uh, with like the official Seven Seas localized branding already. Like pretty much a promotional cover for volume three in English. Uh, but of course those never came out, uh, at least as far as I, I can tell. Uh, I tried to reach out to Seven Seas like a number of times via email as well as like on Instagram. And I don't have a Twitter. I could I should have tried on Twitter uh, to ask them about it. Uh, but I like every single time, like radio silence. Uh, so their customer support is awful. Like I'm trying to f I'm probably going to try to talk to them if they come to a convention near me. Uh, and be like, you know, those type of panels and stuff where they do the q and I'll, I'll queue up immediately and be like, hey, what happened to this manga? And of course, they're not going to tell me anything. But regardless, I, I needed to know what happened. And one of my main motivators for getting this manga in Japanese is that there are no scans of it online. So eventually I'm going to scan all this, which is probably going to mean me uh, like absolutely destroying all of these, uh, which is rather unfortunate. Uh, and also, I need to buy a scanner. But I picked all these up pretty cheap. I need to know what happens. I need to know if the manga stays based or not. Because uh, the problem with a lot of these manga, and it's going to be either like a rant video or something, or a blog that I write, is that a lot of otaku manga tend to to not stay like true to their nature, I guess. Or not true to their nature, but like they don't stay... Uh, like a comfy otaku experience. A lot of them go the way of uh, den yeah, Densha Otoko, where like the main character over time realizes that, you know what, being a Riyajo ain't so bad. Like even Genshiken does that towards the end. I'm not going like, to get too deep into spoilers or whatever. And plus I have a whole uh, like essay length uh, thing about Genshiken um, regarding like the Ni Daime second generation uh, specifically like the end of the manga, what happens to some of the characters and the direction the series goes. Uh, and then other series like Kami no Mizo, Shiru Sekai, uh, like they all sort of like at the end, they, they, they try to, or it feels like they have an obligation to tell an uplifting story of how you can become just a normal person in society or something. And I need to know if this manga does it uh, in, in the manner it does so, because I think it will be uh, worthwhile to investigate this so I'm, I'm eventually going to find out uh, what goes on here but I guess that's about it An overly long explanation about this but if you're interested in that uh, my thoughts about Akihabara uh, or Sotakun's uh, struggle in Akihabara or Maniac Road or Otaku Manga or whatever I just talked about with this uh, look for that blog uh, it was my it's not the most recent. I think it's the se the second to most recent one. Um, I'm also going to be making a YouTube video about it, so stay tuned. I I kind of needed the materials for that. Obviously, I've been waiting on it. And then, of course, Comic Cat video coming soon. TM, uh, just wait on that. And then also, rips of the DVD will slowly appear, mysteriously appear on Nia. Okay. And I guess that's about it. Quick little haul thing.